with an army rising. The church is the breeding grounds for raising godly men and women who are willing to apply kingdom principles and values to bring transformation to their respective societies. We need to have a national focus. We don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the Great Commission. They are equipped in righteousness. Unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know ABC and surprise others to do, but they don't do. Unless we see that. We pray for God to raise right ministers in our nations. We pray for God to raise right tax collectors. We pray for God to raise right security agents. They are bold and fearless. Standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away. But we don't quit. For we know no defeat. The agenda to possess the nations. Welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on Pentecost hour. Stay tuned in. It's Hallelujah. Amen. We are thankful to God for yet another evening. It is evening here in Ghana. Ghana had And uh, I believe that you are ready to listen to the word of God. We want to thank God for yet another opportunity to be found at his feet. Listening to the unadulterated word of God. The transforming way of the mighty one. So let's go back into the memory lane as we connect to Olga and her testimony. Eight and a half years ago, I was condemned to die. A slow, agonizing death of cancer. The best medical brains of the country confirmed the sentence. I was at a dead end street. The ultimate gaped at me. I was young and I didn't want to die. In my desperation, I phoned my doctor and cried out to him the despair in my heart. Rather impatiently, he upbraided me. What's the matter, Oga? Haven't you any fight in you? Sure, you would die if you keep on crying. Now, me doing say, obetie me, e wa asupem nanso odi abufuo e ma me muai say, oga, unni a wadi biya wo mu ana sa oko susu say ya ubewu. Yes, the West has overtaken you. Okay, face the facts. Ampa ni a edin e na tuwi nanso jitum. Quit worrying and do something about it. Right then and there, I took an oath, an oath so solemn that the nails sank deep into my flesh and cold chills ran down my spine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to cry. And if there is anything to mind over matter, I am going to win. I'm going to live. The usual amount of estuary in such advanced cases was administered to me for 40 days. And although my bones stuck out of my emaciated body, and although my feet were like lead, I did not worry. Not once did I cry. I smiled, yes, I forced to smile. 
I'm not so idiotic as to imagine that merely smiling can cure cancer. But I do believe that a cheerful mental attitude helps the body fight disease. At any rate, I experienced one of the miracle cures of cancer. I have never been healthier than in the last few years. Thanks to those challenging fighting words. Face the facts. Quit warring. Then do something about it. And we said that I added the Lord is with you. Because the Lord is with you. Because the Lord is with you. We have said that life is full of challenges. And it is because of these challenges that brings victories. God is with us. So let us rise to face the facts. And then let's quit worrying. Now talk on do something about your situation. Do something about it. Do something about your situation. You need to rise to fake the facts. You have to stop worrying. And do something about your situation. And do it now. Do it today. Do something about your situation. Do it now. And do it today. See, as a manager of this earth, you need to have mastery over yourself. Then you can have mastery over your circumstances. This will power. It comes from the conviction that God is with us. Have confidence in the Lord who is and who is with you. Have confidence in the Lord who is and who is with you. God will keep us in perfect peace. If our mind is stayed on him, if our minds are steadfast on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. Jesus told the disciples, have faith in God. Matthew 6 from 26. Matthew 6 from verse 26 to 30. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bands. Yet your heavenly father, your heavenly father feeds them. So your father has enough to feed birds. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these, these flowers. <laughs> if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith. Nasu when you uncopon frewem aha a woho ne na ochina what di go fru no muno and to masa or in ya de chini ye and mamuana mwa mujidi sa you of little faith. So he's just trying to say, have faith in me. Now what Jesus is not saying here is not to work. 
Nia not to defer anything or everything to him. But he seeks to build the disciples' confidence in him. That he has the ability to meet their needs. Having ability to meet our needs does not mean that we defer everything to him. That does not mean that. We should Patrick. go and sleep and fold our arms and hope that he will come and feed us. Do something about your situation. And do it now. And do it now. In any case, what do we mostly worry about? What do we mostly worry about? Verse 31 to 34. Same chapter, please. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Do not worry, say. Worrying itself is a problem. But when you worry and you keep talking, you add to your challenges. Because your words we always trap you. We are all snared by what we say. So he says, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? See, the tongue is a kind of a master over the body. And the others pay attention to what now, their tongue will say. Once the tongue is speaking and saying that what shall we eat? What shall we wear? You see, the whole body begins to be depressed. Because the master is saying that there's no food. There's no food. If you like wake up in the morning and start saying, if it looks like I'm 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 sick. <laughs> uh, I said yeah, no. By evening, all of them, the other parts who say that master says we are sick. <laughs> So don't worry, say. Don't worry, say. Say, be careful what you think. You spoke about good thinking. You should also be careful what you say. Because you can always have what you say. So when you combine two negative things, thinking wrongly, and speaking evil, you disturb your body. You disturb your life. You disturb your soul. You be closing the door of a brighter future. So don't worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these, what is the word there? Things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these worth things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow we'll worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So what do we mostly worry about? The answer is things. Things. We mostly worry about things. Things are material objects without life. Or consciousness. An animate objects. So do not allow things 
to destroy your body. Don't allow things to terminate your life. You are more precious and superior to them. After all, we will leave these things behind. We will leave these things behind. Now I'm yet to see someone who has cars and the person died and they buried that fellow and the vehicles. I'm here to see. If they attempt that, <laughs> some other people too will not sleep the whole night. Because <laughs> if you are a friend of Kai, on what term say, you have to see it. So, if you are a friend of Kai, you will have to sleep the whole night. Yeah, they will not sleep. They will not sleep. <laughs> so go and watch the body at the cemetery. Oh, bomb over the ass, over the rain. So if you do, any, or the panel, the pediano, eh? When when they get to the grave, who do I see who? And then they work very hard and they get to the car. Oh, bomb over the ass, corner, no, so now we start can't feed you now. They will take the cost as a foolish man. Oh, be ye sa, or the panel, just throw it somewhere. And then we'll take know. the car away. Oh, be ye not to actually know what I say, Papa. No, 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 we will leave these things behind. They do not have eternal value. They don't have eternal value. That is why those of us who are born again, we need to be content with what we have. Don't let us worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we wear? No, don't let us worry saying. So because these things do not have eternal value, do something about your situation before it does something to you and do it today. Now, do something about your situation before it does something to you and do it today. People have collapsed under the burden of accumulated yesterday. Accumulated yesterday's challenges and fearful tomorrows. The burden of accumulated yesterdays and fearful tomorrows. Seems Brothers, but yet a majority of them would have avoided that if they had paid heed, paid attention to the words of Jesus. Nanzo, so how we Let's go back to verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Why are you saying that don't let us go into worrying about tomorrow is this. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So when you wake up in the morning, the day itself has enough trouble of its own. So don't go and add tomorrow's trouble that has not really arrived. Don't pick that one. And then yesterday's trouble that you couldn't do anything about it. When you put this load and carry them upon today's problem, even the strongest person will falter. So do something about your situation. And do it today. Concentrate on today's troubles. See, today is our most precious possession. It is our only sure possession. The Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 24. This is the day which the Lord has made. 
We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. And he has made it for us. And given it to us. Let us rejoice and be glad in the day. It is our most precious possession. So when you wake up in the morning and you see the sun rising, and you hear the sound of bears. Bless the Lord. He has given us another gift of the day. There is none of us that can make a day. But he makes the day for us to better our lots. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is our only sure possession. In the Lord's prayer, what? Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. What? You see, the only bread that you can possibly eat is today's bread. Yesterday's one will be molded, and tomorrow's one is not yet baked. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, as long as it is today. Yes, we say. We must do the works of him who sent us. The night is coming when no one can work. The day called today is God's precious gift to us. That is why today is called present. Present. The only period you can call present is not yesterday, it's past. It's not tomorrow, it's not yet arrived. In fact, in this life, there's nothing like tomorrow. Tomorrow exists just by name. Once the tomorrow arrives, it moves again to another tomorrow. You will never meet it until you die. You will never meet tomorrow. I want to bet you. If you want to chase tomorrow, you will never meet tomorrow. Tomorrow till eternity. It doesn't exist. It is only by name. What is real is today. And that is a present. It is a gift. Now, what does it mean to present something? To have a present? To furnish. Or endow. To furnish. Now or endow with a gift. To bring, to offer. To offer. So today is a gift that God has offered to us. To afford. So today is a gift that God has afforded us. Hmm. He has afforded us to straighten the crooked and to finish the unfinished business. He has afforded us to build on our skills so we don't lose out of the competition. Once you have this gift called today, shut out the past. The dead yesterday shut off the future the unborn tomorrow then you are safe for the day now once you arrive God presents you the day close the door to yesterday it is a dead pass and then shut the unborn future. And then to live in the daytight compartment. Live in the daytight compartment. Concentrate your energy. Your strength. And all your ability on doing today's work superbly today. That is the best way to prepare against the future. Do today's work superbly today. And you'll be preparing effectively against tomorrow. The future is what we do today. 
Who you are today is what you did yesterday. You are a product of your yesterday. Work very hard today. Now, there was this lady who was in the law school. And then the mother told me how she was studying and studying and studying. Uh, recently I met her because it's been a long time, so she came home. She's a lawyer. And then I was asking about how she made it. And then she told me how those days she would leave home for about three weeks. Her phone is off. She goes out to a solitary place, to maybe one of their homes somewhere, lock herself up, tell parents, siblings that I'm out of coverage area. So, she will be there with God and books. Why, why, why did you do that? And she said that she had to write the, the exams to the law school. She had to write it twice. So she told herself that once she has entered the law school proper, the 10 papers that they write, she wasn't going to fail any one of them. She was going to take all the 10 like that. And so she decided to study. And she studied. Now she said that at the end of the day, there were about 700. 69 of them scored all the 10. She was one of them. Now in this young man who came to my house. Now he says that he's trying to write some ACCA. And then he has decided that he's going to pass all the papers. The first attempt should be eight. Now now we see now you need to be saying so she has Says he are writing thirteen papers and he he's done seven already. All of them is called. And then his strategy is that uh, when he began telling me the details of how he carries himself, how he is having sleepless nights, and the times he sleeps, and how he is glued to his boots, I said, that, that is it. Now he's working very hard today against the future. And hmm. do something about your academics and do it today. Do something about your skills. Do it today. Do something about your marriage and do it today. Do something about your parenting and please do it today. Do something about your slothfulness and do it today. See, do something about your anger. <laughs> Some people say that media me cook when you wash it. Wait, wait, I did the boy and once I'm running. I'm bad tempered. I mean, so what does that mean? Now, what does that mean? When the fruit of the spirit is begging to be grown and to be fruitful in you. Do something about your anger. And do it today. About your lateness. And do it today. Do something about your character. Your immoral life. And do it today. Do it today. Shall we just bow down our heads for a moment? What do you have to tackle today? What do you have to tackle today? You can't just be in this rotten marriage and not doing anything about it. See, the answer is not checking out of the marriage. If you do something about it, God will partner with you and you have success in your marriage. Life can be meaningful. 
something do something pasta Let every day come and meet you doing something about your challenges. Let every day come and meet you do something about your skill. Your attitude. And your character. Because this will take you into the future. Your skills. Your attitude. Your character. Don't be blaming your husband all the time. Don't be blaming your wife all the time. Now, you can't change people by direct action. You see, if you want people to change, do the change yourself. Now, you change and they will adopt your change. Thomas Kalele has said this and I want to quote. Our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance but to do what lies clearly at hand. Our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand. Unquote. Do something about your situation means work at it. Wait till like God, you see that it is good and it is very good. Now, little by little, work at it. And it will be good. Now, Genesis 1, verse 12. Genesis 1, verse 12. Now, the last line. And God saw that it was, it was what? It was good. Verse 18. Verse 18. So love about creation. God saw that it was good. Verse 21. Last line. And God saw that it was good. Verse 25. Now you realize that God was still working. And God saw that it was good. Hmm. 31. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening. And there was morning. The sixth day. So the seventh day. He rested. So let us work on our challenges. Because God is with us. Little by little. From glory to glory. One day it will be very good. Then you can rest. In future. See life is in two halves. Jesus says as long as it is day. I must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming. When no one can work. Even the day that God gives us. There is a part we call the day. And the part we call the night. 
the night is not for work. We work during the day mostly. So let us be careful. In our lifetime, there is a day part and there is a night part. When you are around 65, if you are a pastor of the Church of Pentecost, now you go on retirement. And when you go to church, you can't just tell the pastor that I want to preach. On retirement. Uh -huh. <laughs> and sometimes you don't take care, you be praying, closing prayer, closing prayer for 20 years. And these things are normal. Now we know a normal it is. It will happen to me to be praying close in prayer. So while it is there, I should be preaching all that I have to preach. When I'm retired and I'm sitting at the back. Be satisfied that you did your best when you had the opportunity. Because the days of closing prayer are and now and benediction. You realize that oh, you have a lot to give, that there is no much space for you to give. And the upcoming generation do not even remember the old folks. Sometimes you go to church and inadvertently they introduce people and they forget you. It is normal. So today, when you go to church, you are forced to they introduce you, they clap. Let them clap. And then be happy that they are clapping. Because <laughs> somehow they will forget you. Especially when you are not in church and your wife goes, ask for your wife, dear. You see, for me, I prepared my mind. <laughs> you say closing prayer. Say <laughs> I, I will pray from my heart. <laughs> because because it's a big opportunity. And you say come and give the benediction. Yeah. Don't just come and say may the Lord bless. Say close your eyes. Because for a long time you have not been preaching, you preach even in your benediction. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people accuse old people of talking to me. What should they do? <laughs> <laughs> because once you give them the opportunity, <laughs> all the many days that they have not been preaching, they will put it in. That is how life is. There will come a time that even such people going to church becomes a problem. Yeah, because they just cannot go to church. They are old. They are age. They have become fearful. Shall we bow our heads again? Let us pray that we take our chances. While it is day, enjoy your marriage with the wife of your youth. Because soon we will be old folks. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Mm. Oh,
Because we don't have time. We have to be careful of delays. Once you have the day, make the best out of the day. Let the day, let the sun go down the day as you look back and say that I did much. Be careful of delays and procrastination. It could make the future too heavy, too burdensome, too burdensome. Too burdensome. Procrastination is increasing tomorrow's burden. Procrastination is not freedom. It is only piling up tomorrow's troubles. Now in Genesis 43. There's a story of Jacob and his children. You know when they went to Egypt to buy food. Because of famine. They actually told Joseph that they had brother who wasn't present with them. In fact, Joseph wanted to see his brother. His brother Benjamin. So he told them that if they were actually not telling lies, then when they have to come back, they have to come with their brother. When they went back and they had to go and fetch some more food, the old man said, I'm not going to allow Benjamin to leave so that you come and tell me another wonderful story. So Benjamin is not going, we are not going to eat. And he, but somehow uh, it got to a time that the old man saw that if they don't go and fetch food from Egypt maybe they will die and so and so the old man decided that they should send a boy along and then go and fetch some food from Egypt. Let's read 43 verse 10. Now this is what Judah said. And I want us to read together. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. Yeah. As it is, if we had not delayed, we would have gone and returned twice. Delay. Procrastination. We need to be very careful. There are certain things that are delayed and are never able to be recovered. You can ask some of the ladies, they will tell you. Some opportunities never present themselves again. They are delayed into eternity. Doesn't come back to them. Doesn't come back to them. Hmm. Hmm. The Lord is with you. So do something about the situation. And let me just end by saying the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Jesus promised his disciples, I will be with you. And he was with them. Mark 16 verse 20. Mark 16 verse 20. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them. And confirm his word by the signs that accompanied it. The Lord worked with them. Now one day, we free her, we could come and send a miai nina. Na eurade, I can one ho. The eurade at the one a year juma. Now the sentinelene ni a one wadi a si one semu so ding. Brothers and sisters, God is with us. And you are no matter for. 
And he is prepared to work with us through our challenges. Backing us with signs and wonders. Sometimes Sometimes you can see that you have come to your wit end. We said face the facts. Quit worrying. Do something about the situation. But you realize that you have done what you think you can possibly do. Things seems to be out of control. No help. Remember that God is with you. Sometimes you are caged in. And you just don't have options. You simply do not have options. One of the powerful way out of such a situation is to remember that God is with you. And go to him in prayer. Jeremiah 33 verse 1. Jeremiah 33 verse 1. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. Listen. Yes, the Bible says that he was still confined in the courtyard of the guard. So he was confined, he was protected. There's no way out for Jeremiah's escape. But God was with him. So the word of God came to him. You always partner with us and check, get us out of our challenges. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. When we say the Lord, we are talking about the owner of all things. The Lord is his name. Verse 3. Very important verse. And sometimes I wonder why we don't apply this verse. Call on me. And I will answer you. And listen. And tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. We carry needless pain. We bear needless burden. All because we don't call on the Lord. Listen, God says, I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Mm. Hmm. Many years ago, I was asked to preach at a district meeting. It was a forum that a brother would scarcely get the opportunity to preach. So my district pastor has asked me to preach this joint service ah, and I was burdened. And so na me nye asore peni me your brother na so we say me kenya me say na ya de so ama me pa I was really burdened na I had de so ama me so I decided to go and visit my presiding elder who had a shop in the market in the heart of the market ti bo modian se me kwa kwasra me presiding elder na o ye djuma e wo djum so when i went out we were just talking about the pro, the, the program um do one no na ye di san she mu no ho komo no sooner had I left his shop than I heard somebody speaking to me. Me free Nincheno and check na me tea and ni di se ubini me kasa. It was as if someone was preaching to me and telling me how to go about it and giving me the words, actually giving me revelations that has never entered my heart. So I didn't know what to do in the midst of the of the day day, day in the market. Someone was speaking and I was hearing it. So I had to go back to the my presiding at this job. Just go and sit down and take pen and paper and then write these things. Now me tin ma sum si wo bigina me nchen e kasa. Na o kan sam akasi e hinta e di achre me. Na me hunu kwen a me fa so asen e be ya jobo ni mpo me tumi a kasa. Enti ni e ba ya ne se me tumri ka kwa. Ni a me kwa ni nchen presiding e ho. Na ma sha si e se ma fa pen ne paper me chre. 
This is in the market. What of if you find space for him in your closet? Call on me. Sufren. And I will answer you. Now, and me. tell you yeah, great yeah, yeah, and unsearchable yeah. things that you do not know. See, Jabez was more honorable okay. Jabez. Now, than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez. Ah. Saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. He cried out to a specific God, the God of Israel. Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. The Bible says this. And God granted his request. God granted his request. That is why the Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now he was caged in. In pain, how many misery. He, he saw his situation. There was nothing he could do about it. It's like, like a destiny. It was like a destiny. It was like a destiny. And then he cried to God. The Bible says God granted his request. When people have the conviction, that God is with them. They pray. And they pray much. Prayer is bringing God into the equation. Bringing God into the equation. Let him come and work the mathematics for you. Prayer is dependent humility on God. Prayer is partnership with the Almighty in meeting needs answering questions and solving problems. Why are you here today? What has been your fear? What have you been mourning over? Come out from where you are hiding. You woman of valor. Come out. For the Lord is with you. Face the facts of your situation. Quit worrying. Do something about your situation. Do it today. For God is with you. He will walk along with you. And work with you. Till it is very good. Face the facts. Quit worrying. Do something about your situation. The Lord is with you. Thanks for listening to today's word. Subscribe to our social media handles for life transforming messages.